Hey guys, it's Hot Quality Content, the best and worst pictures show guy creator peoples. That's us. And we have unfortunate news that we have lost the audio for Bridge and the Requires. So what we're going to do is basically make a little video here on camera, switch things up today. Of course. And we're going to just talk about River Kwai. Yeah. And I, I, I just want to get into it. I mean. Do we want to get into it? I have the fun facts. Those are All fun. Right. All right. Ian's fun facts, which have been lost. He is owed. Let's let him have his fun facts. All right. I will try to speed run through these. This is Bridge on the Requai, distributed by Columbia Pictures. It has a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes for the critic score, 93 audience score, 8.1 on IMDb out of 10, and an 87 per out of 100 on Metacritic. Released on August 2nd, 1957. It's 161 minutes long, which we lost all of the talk for. And it had a budget of 2.8 mil and made $30.6 million. It is based off the novel of the same name by Pierre Boulet. We already know this one stars Alec Guinness. I want to point out that you nailed his name both then and now. Yeah. That was great. So this one obviously has Alec Guinness, Colonel Nicholson. We may know him from Star Wars, Lawrence no, of Arabia, no. Dr. Zhivago, Hitler, The Last Ten Days, where he plays Adolf Hitler. <laughs> never heard of Hitler. <laughs> I've, I've never heard of this man. Uh, he won two Academy. He has two Academy Award nominations for Best Supporting Actor for Star Wars and Little Dorrit. He has won for Best Adapted Screenplay mm -hmm. for The Horse's Mouth, and he won Best Actor... One Best Actor nomination for Lavender Hill Mob. He also won this year. Spoiler for later. We got William Holden as Shears. He was in Sunset Boulevard, a BLVD, all caps. Stalag 17. He cameo with Casino Royale, the bad one, which is the second time in a row for the best pictures that okay. we have someone from Casino Royale, the bad one. That's fair. And Network, the 1976 film. Towering Inferno, the O.J. Simpson film. Mm. And then Jack Hawkins is as Inspector Fix. We might know, remember him from Ben-Hur. Hey. Ooh. Because we watched that one Because we watched that one point. after that. He's also going to be in Lawrence of Arabia. We get more Jack Hawkins. Woo! And the director of this film is David Lean. We're going to know him from Lawrence of Arabia. He directed that one, too. He also directed Oliver Twist. Dr. Javago, A Passage to India. Those are, um, you know, two more Alec Guinness films. Uh, he has two Best Director wins. Okay. okay. Two Best this Director This movie wins. in Lawrence of Arabia. I think he also directed A Passage to India which I think might have won. So that two wins for best director might be wrong. Okay. We'll we have a out. couple production notes real quick. The screenwriters for this movie were on the Hollywood blacklist and only worked on this film in secret. Mm. Hmm. Later on, they were actually instated their Oscars. Good. Which is really, really good. good. Tight, but. tight. And w William Holden made 10% of the gross of this movie. Good. Which is one of the best deals of all, like one of the first big money deals in Hollywood. He, he got 10% of all the money for this movie. One of the actors. That isn't Alec Guinness. Hmm. Stupid. Strange. Okay. Uh, Guinness admitted that Lean didn't want him for the role because David Lean didn't like British people. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. hated when he had to work with the British actors. He then proceeded to work with Alec Guinness for like seven more movies, but that's neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. Right. He, <laughs> he thought that the, the British people complained that the movie was anti-English. And he would much rather work with, with American actors. Guinness was like a last ditch effort on this movie. He almost didn't have him, and he ended up keeping him, which is good because then he worked with him, won three more, yeah. or two more Oscars afterwards. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to go straight to some award show notes. Eight nominations and seven wins Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor, Lost Best Supporting Actor. Best Adapted, Best Score for a Drama or Comedy, Best Cinematography, Color, Best Film Editing. Movie was stacked. Yeah, it was. Mm. Yep. Those are some um, prestigious nominations, too. Yeah. No, there's, it got a lot of the big categories. That's all I'm going to do for those. It was more extensive, but we do need to keep going. Keep yeah. it up. Well, what's so. the Mary Pickford fact? The Mary Pickford fact. Did you have this one specifically? I did have this one specifically. Ooh. Oh, no, I didn't have this one specifically on here. Oh, uh, well. That one, the Mary Pickford fact is lost time. Lost Mostly because they're hard time. to find. Of yep. course. And she's very racist. Um, uh, all right. Of course. So, <laughs> here we go. She was happy that they, they did brown face in Lawrence of Arabia. So we actually That's don't have to do our little skip time. <laughs> we can just talk right about it because we've already seen it. Yeah. yeah. River Kwai, I'm just going to say it. To spoil it immediately, it is my favorite one so far. Yes. I, I've I even agree. now seen Ben-Hur, which we will get to. 
after seeing Ben Hur, River Kwai is still my favorite. Yeah, I keep going back and forth between uh, this and Casablanca because oh, Casablanca I re- I really love Casablanca. You know, I yeah. uh, I before before yeah, you watched yeah. any of these movies, I, Ian, I know you don't want. No, I know was, you, I know fine. you're like it's a seven, but honestly, yeah, it it's, one of, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. It's a banger. River Kwai is up there. It's also a banger, but I don't know mm-hmm. if I can have it top Casablanca for me. The thing about River Kwai. The thing about River Kwai that really got me going was how excellent, how excellently paced it was for such a long movie. Mm-hmm. It's these, it's these movies that are incredibly long, and you don't want to cut a second of. That mm-hmm. really impressed me. This movie, Ben Hur, like those things. If you're making a movie that's over like three and a half hours long, you better justify it. You better justify every second of screen right. time, or I'm gonna be mad. And every second feels justified because of how well acted it is how interesting everything going on is mm-hmm. the interplay between the quote quote villain and alec guinness's character mm-hmm. how interesting alec guinness's character is just in general i like, love his character he's yeah. one of the best characters in any of the best picture winners yep yep and i love the fact that he's so committed to what he's doing that he will not yield he's like oh no the geneva conventions dictate clearly that yep. you can't force us to do this and, and then the general goes those are the geneva suggestions mm-hmm. go to work and and then like <laughs> as the movie progresses you see him stay committed like okay now we're gonna go ahead and build this bridge make it the best goddamn bridge you've ever seen yeah and then at the end of the movie he's defending the bridge from his own troops and then he's like oh my oh god, god what, what have i done, done? yeah which one is the like most one of the powerful best, lines one of the best lines seen. most powerful lines like yeah. in any of the freaking best picture winners ever i think it's just legendary yeah and the movie is very very well edited i, be- I believe um i remember a couple of little faux pas but it's a movie from like the 1950s there's mm-hmm. obviously gonna be film tears mm-hmm. film cuts it's fine it happens and i have like the biggest sexiest version of this movie too like yeah. i have the, the juiciest version as I'm you so should happy. yeah it's, yeah, like it's worth it. it this movie is 100 percent worth an upscaled watch yeah oh, it yeah. is just another epic it is mm-hmm. it's so good <laughs> and you know the 50s thus far because we're like this is like the eighth one in Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of what we're watching, so far it's been lackluster. I mean, I've loved All About Eve, but you know, you get some stinkers in there. All About Eve yeah. and On the Waterfront are the only two good ones up to this point. And then this one just comes and just hits you, and it's like, yeah. whoa, this is just unreal how good this is. Yep. So yep. it feels the cinematography in this movie is genuinely impressive. Like mm-hmm. the explosive work and the model work, and like not even the model work, the bridge. I think they built like a real bridge. It's they convincing. Did. Yeah. It's great. And it's it's fantastic. The acting is super duper solid. Mm-hmm. Like. It's just one of those movies where every single aspect that you look at it, you're like, yeah, I, I get I get why they chose this. Yeah. I 100% get why they chose Joe this. Joe what are your feelings on the matter? You've been pretty quiet so far. Oh, my timer for something went off. Never mind. But you, keep going. You know what? I'll tell them what your timer was for lasagna. Oh, I love lasagna. Anyways... Yeah, I mean, basically everything you guys have said, I I agree with. I mean, well, agree with it while the, I get the lasagna. Okay, fair. Uh, the spectacle of seeing them actually building a bridge and then like seeing the fully completed bridge—that is a nice looking bridge. Yeah, I would honestly. I would walk across it. The, mm, <laughs> I don't know. I don't well, know. It's gone now. It's gone. Yeah, I wouldn't walk across it. If there was dynamite attached to it. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, 100%. no, but like the stakes are really high too yeah. the whole time, and like you have the uh, the I don't remember. I, it's been a bit. I don't remember anybody's names, but you had the guy that was faking to be a, a general. Yep. Um, to just like you know get more power. I think that might have been Shears. Yes, I believe you. I believe you are correct. Because it's Shears, is the colonel. I think that's Jack Hawkins' character. I don't think that's right, but it's Nicholson. You're right. Shears and no, nope. You're Inspector right. Fix. It, it's Shears. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So the like the British Army like kept finding him, you know, bringing it, bringing him to land and being like, "Well, yeah, you know everything, and we already know that you're a fake person. Yeah. So you're gonna. So have... they're not gonna be that mad if we pluck you in for this you're, mission. You're gonna have yeah. to do this for us. Yep." In fact, your army already agreed. Yeah. Well, Zanya's perfect, by the way. I just checked. Mm -hmm. They basically extorted him. Yeah, they did. Which is just incredible. Like, the movie is... The the only thing is this has that... This has that feel to it where you just never wanted it to end. Yeah. And it ends so sad for everybody. It It does. does. It's Although I will so say, sad. I'm glad it didn't keep going because I think the ending was Phenomenal. like yeah. phenomenally done. Yep. 
I just I think the way that like Elegance's entire character arc that you don't really realize is like happening that strongly is completely like pulled the rug out with like what have I done? Yep. Yeah. Everything that man committed to and didn't realize how strongly he'd commit to, and that would be his downfall in the first place. And then he's the one who's like, oh shit, now I have to blow up the bridge. And it was yeah. like this yep. whole fucking deal. That's I mean, wow, what storytelling. Like I oh dude, filmmakers should aspire to be that good of storytellers. No, no. Make that. Transformers. Yeah, just yeah. Transformers instead. Michael but, Bay's Bridge of the River Kwai. Yeah. When? Where it's it's uh, Pearl Harbor. <laughs> yeah, it did happen. That's true. That's his from here to eternity, actually. Yep. But um yeah. But no, honestly, Bridge on the River Kwai. David Lean is an excellent director, mm -hmm. obviously, and even from the few movies that I named. Like, we have to watch two more of his movies, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's an incredible director. He's and a legend. I'll say it. One of the best, straight up. Mm -hmm. He's considered one of the best by a lot of people. Well, good. And it's it shows, it oozes through in the script, it oozes through in the way that the movie's shot and edited and everything. Mm -hmm. And despite hating working with alec guinness and not wanting him for this movie he then continued to work with him four more times like it's just <laughs> genuinely impressive mm -hmm. how the, a relationship between two people that wasn't great at first ended up blossoming into something that created some of the best movies ever made yep yep including this one 100 percent, absolutely like i love seeing stuff like that yeah. and we, we we're gonna see when we talk about a couple of them that a lot of these directors ended up sticking with their actors yep it's not just Christopher Nolan and his gang of crew or, or Robert Eggers and Anya Taylor-Joy. Like, it's – this goes back. And it's really interesting to see. Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro. <laughs> They're the same person. Like, yeah. honestly, it's just genuinely impressive, the whole film. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I don't think I've ever felt so weirdly strong about a war film, mm -hmm. except Apocalypse Now, which should have won Best Picture that year. We're going to get there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But to wrap that up, out of 10, everybody. 10. I'll say it, 10. A nine, because no movies are 10. Nine, no yeah. movies are yeah, 10. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I throw a small piece of paper in your direction. No, I understand. <laughs> I understand. He understands. Fair. I'm not mad about the second I'm highest score. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm it's the second bitch. highest score you can possibly give a movie, so who cares? Yeah. But, uh, it's yeah. actually the highest score you can possibly give a movie if you're Joe Quinn. Yeah, so, so yeah. think about it that way. Yeah. I, I rank movies from one to nine. <laughs> Apparently. What an objectively flawed rating. You know, we should talk <laughs> exactly. about this out of 10 discussion. I think we either will or have. It's coming on the channel soon. Yep. But, um, yeah. yeah. I'm so. very sorry that this got lost. We're missing some fun facts. We're missing some more in-depth, like, mm -hmm. scene analysis. I know. But, mm -hmm. It was fresh then. But you know what? It's so good of a movie that I can still recall it. Yeah. If we had to do, like, a redo of Cavalcade, I couldn't help you. Yeah. <laughs> B-roll. Yeah, I, a I couldn't do it. A lot of B-roll, a lot of dancing, a lot of singing. A redo of Cimarron, like who the fuck cares? Racism and cowboys. <laughs> Let's redo Hamlet, fellas. Woo! Uh, me being bored by Lawrence <laughs> oh, Olivier for two hours. Fuck that. Yeah. All right, so that'll just about do us. Thank you so much for watching, and next week will be a normal episode. Okay. Yes, and it'll be GG. GG, woo! <laughs>